of the young dudes by Miss King Binet in Iron. Chapter 127. Seventh Year. Responsibilities. Monday 9th, January 1978. Remus wrote three letters on his last night before school that Christmas break. True, we need a muggle stamp and were to be posted into the red Royal Mail pillar box at the end of the road before they left for King's Cross. The second could wait until he got to Hogwarts and could use one of the school owls. The first was to hope. Dear Miss Jenkins, my name is Remus Lupin. My father was Lyle Lupin, and I believe I am your son. I am now 17 years old. I was given a letter written by you in 1965. I hope that you do not mind my writing to you. If you would like to write back, I would like that very much. Yours sincerely, Remus John Lupin. He thought he had better sign off with his full name, though he would be very surprised if there was another Remus Lupin living in Britain. He also thought it best to keep it short and to the point. She would appreciate that, maybe, if she chose to ignore the letter. The second letter was to Grant. Dear Grant, I hope you had a nice Christmas. I wish I could have come to visit, but I stayed with my friend's family and it's hard to get away. I hope you're alright. How's the job going? Have you saved up for a flat yet? I'll have to start thinking about that soon. It's my last term of skill, ever, and by June, I will be living in the real world. I hope I can see you then. Please write back as soon as you can, and let me know how you're doing. Yours, Remus. He didn't want to put yours sincerely, because it seemed silly and over-formal. He didn't want to put love, because that seemed very extreme. So in the end, yours seemed the simplest and most honest way to put it. So it's just the Ferrex letter still to post then? Sirius asked, as they took their seat in their usual carriage on the Hogwarts Express. They were completely alone. Peter had gone in search of Dorcas, who had apparently written him a very steamy letter over the Christmas break, while James and Lily had made a beeline for the prefect's carriage. Just the Ferrex one, Remus nodded, pat in his pocket. Sirius sat on the same bench as him, reclining back and stretching his legs out in Remus's lap, arms folded behind his head. Remus snorted indulgently. Make yourself comfortable, why don't you? Don't mind if I do, Sirius grinned wickedly. So, he said, which letter are you most looking forward to getting a reply from? Which reply am I most looking forward to? Remus quirked an eyebrow dryly. You mean between my battle-wounded ex-teacher, my young offender ex-boyfriend, or the mother who abandoned me? Well, when you put it like that, Sirius tutted. Honestly, the amount of stuff you keep back. Would you rather I was whining all the time? Remus sighed, opening the book he'd brought for the journey on top of Sirius's legs. No, Sirius mused, staring up at the carriage ceiling thoughtfully. But, I mean, if you didn't have me to talk to about this stuff, I'd be worried your head would explode. It would not explode, thank you very much. Remus slapped his knee lightly with the orange-covered penguin paperback. You're so dramatic. I kept perfectly well before you decided to involve yourself. How? Well, Remus chewed his lip. I, uh, you'll think it's stupid. What? I make lists in my head. Benefits and losses. And sometimes I have pretend conversations, you know, to help me work through a problem. Bloody hell, Mooney, Sirius sat up, spluttering. You complete nutter, Remus laughed. Yeah, okay, maybe a bit mental. Sirius slid his feet off Remus's lap and sidled up to him on the seat. Ever had an imaginary conversation with me? No, Remus replied, closing his eyes as he felt Sirius's breath on his neck. I only have imaginary conversations with sensible people. Well, maybe that's where you're going wrong. Sirius began to kiss Remus, very lightly, just behind his earlobe. Remus squirmed. The book dropped to the carriage floor. Suddenly, the door began to rattle open, and giggles could be heard in the corridor. Sirius and Remus leapt apart, just as Marlene and another girl stumbled inside. Oh! Marlene's eyes widened in surprise, cheeks turning pink. Thought this car was empty. Nope! Sirius leaned back, looking amused. He was eyeing Marlene with a very wicked glint in his eye. He winked at the girl coming in behind her, a tall, dark-haired sixth year. Remus thought he vaguely recognised. Patel, Sirius nodded. Oh, God, Remus thought to himself. Could Sirius possibly have own conquests I don't even know about? Remus, 
Have you met Yasmin? Arlene asked, taking a seat opposite him. She's the new keeper. Oh, right. Hiya, Remus nodded, giving an awkward wave. No, Mary, Sirius was raising an eyebrow at Marlene, as if he knew something. Remus was just confused and a bit flustered. No, Mary, Yasmin answered, with a similar smirk. She's talking to one of the Ravenclaw prefects, Marlene said, quickly. It's not as if we're deliberately avoiding her or anything. Marlene looked. Was she blushing? Why was everybody acting so oddly? Remus shifted in his seat, noting the weird atmosphere. Hmm, Sirius said, still smiling at Marlene smugly. What were you two up to then? Yasmin tutted and looked him dead in the eye with a wry smile of her own. Nothing. What were you two up to? She raised a suggestive eyebrow, and Remus nearly leapt with shock. She knew? Just who was this Yasmin person then? Nothing, Sirius sat up straight. Well then, Marlene shrugged, her face clearing as she settled back into her seat, looking like she had just won a particularly rewarding game of chess. We'll leave it at that then, shall we? Fine, Sirius leaned back to you, folding his arms. Yasmin giggled, and Remus just scratched his head. What are we leaving where? He asked Sirius, later that evening. They were making their way slowly up to the hour before curfew. He'd eaten a lot at dinner, and was somewhat regretting it now. Mooney, really? Sirius laughed. Someone as observant as you hasn't noticed anything different about Marlene lately. I don't know what you're talking about, he panted, struggling as always with the spiral staircase. Remus didn't want to admit that if he was observant, it was only Sirius he was observing. He typically regarded the girls as a complete mystery, and rarely had any idea what was going on with them, unless they explicitly told him. Lily and Mary did this more often than Marlene who had always been as private as he was. Oh, come on, Mooney, Sirius laughed. Marlene and Yaz, don't tell me you didn't see. They were all over each other before they realised the carriage wasn't empty. Remus stopped, partly because he needed a moment to catch his breath, partly because he couldn't believe what Sirius was saying. You mean, Marlene is... Yep. And Yasmin? Yep. Bloody hell. Yep. Sirius' eyes were glittering mischievously. Can't believe you hadn't figured it out already. Well, Remus soft. they were nearly at the top now. I'm pretty impressed that you did, seeing as you apparently had no idea about me after we'd been shagging for a year. It wasn't a whole year, Sirius replied defensively, reaching the top and looking around furtively before continuing into the empty room. Remus came in behind him and looked for an appropriate owl. It wasn't a long journey, he didn't think. He seemed to remember Ferrex telling him that his grandmother lived in Liverpool. It had been a difficult letter to write, but necessary, considering they had lost parted on difficult terms. He simply upped Ferrex as well, and added in a few inconsequential details about his new preparation. So if Marlene knows, Remus said, thoughtfully, tying the letter to his chosen hour's leg. Yeah, I know. James next, Surrey sighed. I don't mean to keep bringing it up, Remus said, upon Jekly, setting the owl free to fly out the nearest window. He watched it go. No, I promised I would do it, Sirius threw up his hands. Anyway, this term's going to be enough of a nightmare, what with Newt and the war. Rather not have anything else to worry about. Are you nervous? Shitting myself. Lovely, Remus rolled his eyes. Can I help? Not if you're going to suggest me having an imaginary conversation with Prongs. Don't see why not, Remus shrugged. Prongs is easy to do. Nice and predictable. Hmm, unlike some, Sirius murmured. Anyway, it's not what he'll say that I'm worried about. I know what he'll say. It'll be like it was when you, um, came out, Remus prompted, helpfully. Sirius nodded, bashfully. I know he'll be his usual righteous self. I'm more worried about the stuff he doesn't say. Well, Remus said, turning away from the window. There's nothing you can do about that. Black? Black! Oi, oh, Padfoot! Sirius's pocket began shouting at him. Sirius grinned, fishing out his compact mirror and opening it. Speak of the devil. Where are you, the tosser? James's voice boomed out of the mirror. Alry, Mooney with you? Yup. Dumbledore wants him. 
Right now? Sirius glanced up at Remus, whose stomach sank. This was never good. One hour later. Remus was not surprised to find all three marauders, and Lily, who by this point may as well have had her own nickname and access to the map anyway, waiting outside of Dumbledore's office for him. He was grateful. He was in such a state that if he'd had to walk back to the tower alone, he'd probably have got lost. Well, Sirius asked, eager as always to be the first to know. Um, said Remus. Come on, Lily said, taking his arm gently. You don't have to tell us. We just wanted to know you are okay. Of course he has to tell us, Sirius frowned. Remus gave him a warning glance. Can we go somewhere a bit more private? Not the common room. Dorm room? Peter suggested. Yeah, Remus nodded. He wouldn't speak to them until they got there, and he used the time to work out exactly how he was going to explain, without hurting at least Sirius's feelings, never mind wounding James's pride. Dumbledore hadn't said he couldn't tell anyone, only to exercise caution with who he told. For your safety, and theirs, the old man cautioned ominously. Remus still had serious doubts about whether or not Dumbledore was all that concerned for his safety, personally, but kept his mouth shut. He had to be careful what he said, in Remus's position. Finally, they all piled into the Marauder's dorm room, even Lily, which was a bit weird, especially when she sat herself down on James's bed, as if she had done it a hundred times before. Remus sat on the lid of his trunk. I hadn't even had time to unpack yet. So? Sirius asked again, impatient, leaning against his bedpost. What did Dumbledore want? He gave me an assignment. Remus stared at the worn-out rug as he said this, not meeting anyone's eyes. He still couldn't quite believe it himself. He what? James surprised Remus by speaking first. He gave you? Not any of us? James, Lily said, sharply, touching her boyfriend's arm. It's obviously something Remus is best suited for. Werewolves, Sirius said. Remus looked up and met his eye. He looked upset, so Remus smiled. Yeah, done it before, haven't I? You've done? Lily started, then shook her head, as if thinking better of it. What does he need from you? Why now? They think there's one in Ogsmaid, Remus explained, slowly. The centaurs told him, or something. It was foggy on those details, because when Dumbledore had been explaining it, Remus had been trying very hard not to throw up from nerves. Dumbledore wants me to, um... Make my presence known next time I'm in town. See if it, uh, takes the bait. Bait! Sirius practically shouted. It's just an expression, Remus replied. Not a great one, Peter said, nervously, chewing on his nails. Sorry, Remus shrugged. Don't worry about me. There is a werewolf, and it's one of Greybacks, and I don't think I'm in any danger. He wants me to join him, remember? Yeah, I remember getting my own invitation to join that side, Sirius said, with a shiver. Remus wished he hadn't brought that up. The last image he needed in his head right now was Sirius's unconscious body falling out of the pot's fireplace on that horrible night. It's not going to be like that, he said, stiffly. Nothing might happen at all. They might not even be here for me. And I was okay, last time, wasn't I? Only because Ferox showed up. Sirius had forgotten they weren't alone. He was gearing up for a proper row. I know, but I'm of age now. I know what to expect. Remus tried to keep his own voice placid, hoping it would remind Sirius to keep himself in check. It's so dangerous, Remus, Lily started. I know that too, but I wasn't exactly given a choice, he snapped. She lowered her head and pursed her lips. He hadn't meant to raise his voice to her, but he'd have to feel bad about it later. Just now, it was a bit too much to ask. When? Sirius asked, calmer than before. Next dog's made weekend. That's in two weeks, James said. After the next moon. They're going to increase security in the village, obviously, Remus said, after last time. Okay, I'm going to need a few things explained here, Lily said, a deep crease in her forehead. James, would you? Remus pleaded. I think I just want to go to bed. Yeah, of course, James nodded, springing into action at once. We can talk about this tomorrow, when everyone's had some time. Thanks, Remus smiled, weakly, getting up, 
flinging a go and brush his teeth, looking forward to being alone in the bathroom for a few minutes to collect himself. Mooney, James said, quickly, as the others got up. I didn't mean that you shouldn't get an assignment, or that you can't do it at anything. I know, Remus nodded, patting him on the shoulder. Believe me, if you or Sirius could do it instead, I wouldn't be Dumbledore's first pick. Suppose I just got lucky, eh? Inside the locked bathroom, he pressed his back against the door and tried to regulate his breathing. Now that his friends knew, it all became much more real to him. The thought that had been gnawing away at him since Dumbledore had first described the task finally sank in. He never actually thought he would ask this, Remus chastised himself. He never really believed you would be useful. Be careful what you wish for, Noony Lupin. Dizzy and trembling, he now pressed his ear to the bathroom door. They had all left the room, all but one. He wrenched the door open without a second thought and stood face to face with Sirius. You okay? Sirius asked, his cool blue eyes full of concern. Remus shook his head. No. Sirius reached out and Remus clung to him.